A Christmas Carol, as told by Edgar Allan Poe, by Janaya Hands, 8th grade, Wade Park School. I was not at fault, and you may think me mad, but know this, I was driven to the place that I now reside, by the spirits and the ghosts that now taunt me on the day of the birth of the Holy Son. I am tormented. How could it be a holy day when I am forced down to the deepest pits of hell on that dreadful day? Now this story that I tell you now is the furthest from fiction as the earth to the moon. I loved her, no matter what the clergyman or the policeman may tell you. That is the sacrifice of love. You must be willing to cherish your lover and rid them of all earthly desire and pain. That is what my sacrifice did for her. Margot always found me intoxicated with and befallen with slurred speech. I grew more and more irritable, moody. I would have outbursts of anger. I was prone to inflicting pain on the ones around me, including my sweet Margot. One of these moments, where I was deeply affected by the effects of the fiend substance, I did something that I shall be tortured for the rest of my days. I can hardly solicit the idea that the outcome of that foul day affected Margot as much as it did I. On that day, on the first day of the month of the Lord and Holy Son, I killed her. I shall not put it in layman's terms or put any ideas in that statement that might solicit the belief that I did not do as such. I killed her in cold blood. The neighbors heard the shrieks and didn't waste any time in notifying the authorities. They came as quick as the life drained from her body. In court, I pleaded mental, which in no way I am or shall be described as such, and was sent to the asylum. But the story that I pen today doesn't end there. That is just where it began. The outside of the asylum was the part that frightened me the most. It was a dark and foul-smelling place. The paint off the walls was peeling. Of the paint that still resided on the walls, well, it was this deep black that looked like the innermost bowels of one's soul. It had the look of a castle, and you could tell this place was one of death and sorrow. Once I entered the place, I knew it was no place for a man of my standard and rank. These people, they were really and truly mad. They twitched and laughed and stared. They told tales of murder and sin. I also met Tommy, a guard who barely makes ends meet. It was laughable, really, that I, a supposedly convicted madman, had it better than a man who was a guard and got to see his family every day. And when I got to my room on the day of the son's birth, Christmas, that was the first time that it happened. I tried to rest peacefully that night, but instead of being awoken by the screams of the patients, I got awoken by a ghost. And this is where the story goes into the realms of fiction. But I swear to that I am not mad, nor is this story fiction. Margot, is that you, my love? I asked questionably and rubbed my eyes to assure myself that I had not still been sleeping. Yes, my love, she answered just louder than a whisper. I got up from my bed and enveloped her in my embrace. But when I reached her, there was nothing to grab. I'm sorry, my love, said Margot. I am nothing more than a spirit of someone you lost. I have no body to reside in. I believe I understand, I said. What brings you here? I am here to take you to a place that exists, but in a way that it was in the past. A place that exists somewhere else, and a place that exists but not in the way that we know it today. She always spoke in riddles and rhymes. It was quite childish to me, but was one of the reasons why I adored her. She always tried to make me happy with said riddles, but before I could respond, we were in front of a bar. I had recalled this place from my memory, in that moment, and a shudder passed through my body. This was the place where I had met her. 
We were both young and spry. Do you recall this place? asked Margot. The establishment looked new, contrasting drastically to how it looks now. I answered Margot with a yes, and she led me into this place. For a strange reason which I am unable to explain, I was filled with a sense of dread. The first person I laid eyes upon was myself. Margot and I were dancing and laughing. We were young and in love. I hadn't started becoming intoxicated yet. Welcome to Christmas past, my dear. This is the day where we first met. Christmas, said Margot. That is when I realized that Margot hadn't forgiven me. She was sent from down below to torment me. I don't want to remember this, I screamed at her. Oh, my love, but you must. I have suffered, and you shall too, Margot said. My sin had caused this. This wasn't a happy reunion akin with a family reunion where family rejoiced in one another. This was torture at its purest form. I woke up again, back in my room, and Margot... Leave me at peace, you damned spirit! I screamed. Of course, she still resided in the place where she stood. We must go, my love, to the present, to Tommy's house, said Margot. Suddenly, without any warning, I was in Tommy's home. A few children, a woman and Tommy, were sitting around the table with little to eat. Another child came down the stairs. He had a wooden cane and had a broken leg. Tommy picked him up and sat the child down at the table. Why would you bring me here, I asked, and what fate shall befall that child? Margot answered, I brought you here to show you that even a poor man surrounded by his family is better than a rich madman who killed his wife. I am not mad, I yelled again and was immediately silenced because suddenly we were in a graveyard with Tommy looking at a grave sorrowfully. It read Tiny Tim, and a cane was placed on top of the grave. I looked down, almost as sorrowfully as Tommy did. Across the graveyard, I saw an unmarked grave. Against my good judgment, I proceeded towards it and looked inside it. There was nothing there. Whose grave is this? I asked. Margot pushed me into the grave, and I heard screams and yells all throughout the night. When I woke up on the 26th the next day, I felt worse than I could ever have imagined in my worst nightmare. Every single year on that dreadful day, she visits me and take this letter as the last one before death because I can no longer take it any more. It has been 13 years of this torture and I can't stand it. I should have appreciated her and loved her. That was what that day was about. And now it is too late to turn back. I just wish I could have figured out this fact before my worst sin and before it was too late. Goodbye. This is the last thing I shall pen. And you shall know my story. Mm -hmm.